Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is January 13th, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, InfoWars analysis of Obama's State of the Union address. How many bold-faced lies did he tell this time? Then, Iran releases 10 U.S. Navy sailors who were captured in the Persian Gulf. Plus, Senator Rand Paul reveals who killed the audit the Fed bill. The good news is, you know, we got a majority yesterday. We got 53 votes for auditing the Fed, and we needed 60, unfortunately. We were missing uh, Ted Cruz, unfortunately. We got close, but we didn't quite get there. But to me, that's a long fight. It's long overdue. The Federal Reserve really is responsible for a lot of uh, the income inequality in our country. That's how we recovered from the worst economic crisis in generations. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water. Pairing the unprecedented superfiltration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell, it removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants, and hormones. Filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons, stainless steel construction, easy assembly, low maintenance, replacement filters are simple to install. And now, as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer, you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. <laughs> Now, coming up later in our broadcast, we'll have a special report from Leanne McAdoo. She went out into the street and asked people what they would do if they won this massive lottery jackpot. Also, a special report from John Bowne, and I talked to printable gun pioneer Cody Wilson. But first, we go to Joe Biggs, who's on the streets in Charleston, South Carolina, getting ready for the RNC debate. All right, and thank you for joining us, Joe. Thanks, Ricard. Now, we're standing outside of the Belmont Charleston place. Now, this is the actual location where the RNC is meeting on whether or not they should go with the impeachment process. Now, uh, you can actually go to Infowars.com. Steve Watson wrote an article about a week ago talking about uh, the RNC considering impeachment proceedings. The resolution consists of 48 criminal charges for President Obama, and it's titled Articles of Impeachment of Barack Hussein Obama. So that's happening here right now. This should be going on until about Friday, from what I've heard thus far. Now, also, we have the first presidential debate of the GOP, 2016 that starts tomorrow now we do know that fiorina has not been allowed to come back to this main stage and also ran paul so we want to come out here have a chance to chime in on the uh the mystery science theater thing that we always do where you guys will be uh commenting on the debate as well as coming to us live with some feedback from people here at the debate as well thus far in the city have you seen a lot of pageantry uh, a lot of uh, you know gates laid out for crowds or anything like that in the city of charleston um, I haven't seen that here. We're actually uh, further south from the North Charleston Coliseum where the debate will be. But here currently at this uh, hotel where they're uh, looking into the impeachment process, I haven't seen a lot of security or anything like that thus far. Yeah, the impeachment process, you know, it's uh, it's been a pretty big polarizing thing. You know, a lot of people say we don't want to make Obama a martyr. Other people saying, you know, we may not have until the end of the year to uh, get rid of this guy and his uh, policy. So. It's going to be very interesting to see, you know, if this plays in this uh, this week's debate. Um, you know, as you know, Joe, previously uh, the Democrats have been having these debates on Saturday nights, you know, when Star Wars comes out or the next one's going to be during the NFL playoffs, from what I understand. So it's very interesting to me that they continue to have these debates at times that nobody's going to be watching. Yeah, exactly. It's like they're hiding from something. They know that that's going to make it look bad when you have a primetime audience that has their full attention that Hillary Clinton is going to have all of her skeletons come out in front of a large audience. And they're using that mask of an NFL playoff game to skate behind that so people won't find out what's really going on when Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton start bickering back and forth. Now, they have no problem with the uh, Republicans going out on the main stage 
in front of a uh, uh, you know a population that has no distractions whatsoever because people want to hammer down on the Republicans. People hate Donald Trump. A lot of people do. You know, you got a lot of people that uh, are confused on whether or not Ted Cruz should be allowed to run for president. So there's a lot more uh, WWE themed things with the RNC versus uh, the Democratic debate. People want to keep that on the hush hush. Well, it's going to be very interesting to see. And of course, as you alluded to, we will have our live coverage here starting at 7 p.m. Central. The debate itself is going to start at 8 Central, but I believe Leanne's going to do a piece. We'll start about 7.30 and then we'll be throwing to yourself and Richard Reeves live in Charleston, South Carolina. Thank you so much, Joe Biggs. Well, thank you. And we also want to encourage as many people that are watching to come out and support us and uh, let us hear your opinions on the upcoming presidential election. Thank you, Jatari. And there goes Joe Biggs. Now we're talking about the Republicans, but also there's the Democratic debate, as we alluded to. They want to have it during a time that nobody's watching, so we will not be covering that. If they want to have it like on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, when people actually tune in, yeah, we talk about that as well. I'm not cheerleading for the Democrats, nor am I cheerleading for the Republicans. I'm just calling it straight down the middle the best I can. And people are calling it down the middle with Obama's latest State of the Union address, of course, that happened here recently. And we have a new article from Kit Daniels today, Obama's three biggest lies of the State of the Union address. Number one, Obama claims America has the strongest, most durable economy in the world. In direct contrast to reality, the president said anyone who points out America's economy is in a decline is peddling fiction. Now, think about this. We have a huge financial deficit. We continue to spend millions, if not billions of dollars, uh, whatever it is, uh, minutes, uh, years, whatever. I, I don't know. the. You guys have seen all that, that ticker clock. But anyway, we spend a huge amount of money on our military industrial complex. We have a huge bubble in the educational market. A lot of people coming out of college, colleges and they can't find jobs. So it leads to a whole big deal. I saw that movie recently, The uh, the Big Short. It talked about the financial and the housing market decline of 2008. It's a very interesting film. I'm not saying it's the most historically accurate. I'm not a big economic guy. But it shows you how easily things can be manipulated into a situation that's not good for the entire country. Because a lot of people, they feel safe. And they say, I don't own stocks. Or personally, I don't own stocks. But it affects much larger than just the people who own the stocks. Because, for example, they have the, uh, the person in the movie He's paying his rent to his uh, to his uh, uh, landlord, and he's doing it on time and in a timely fashion. But his landlord isn't paying the mortgage, so you know even though the guy was doing everything he needed to do, the landlord wasn't handling their business. So that's just one of the many things that's in this article. Also, Obama claims we need to focus on destroying ISIS, but he omits the fact that NATO is arming and funding ISIS. Not to mention how we continue, and we meaning the CIA, continue to uh, fund. Al Qaeda, you know, it goes back to the Mujahideen uh, with President Reagan. So it's nothing new under President Obama. But we arm our enemies and then send our guys out there to fight them, just like we uh, give firearms to Mexican drug cartels. And then we tell the Border Patrol to fight them. And then when the Border Patrol agents end up dead, Obama goes to Mexico and says, the reason for all this gun violence in Mexico is because of American demand. It's like, no, it's because you're giving uh, guns to guys like El Chapo in Sinaloa. that They don't want to mention anything about that. And as Kit points out, in the real world, the White House and several other NATO nations, particularly Turkey, are arming and funding ISIS-linked militants. And that is spot on. And also we have number three, Obama claims Obamacare helps create jobs. This is the kicker here. But the affordable insurance is too expensive for many companies to afford for their employees anyway. And as a result, many firms are now relying on part-time employees to avoid the Obamacare penalty. So as well-intentioned as it may be in the reality of things, it's not really helping because you'll see in an article coming up a little bit later how many people are stuck working even after they retire. Now let's talk about a big kicker. Obama says that he's done so much to help the veterans. Uh, under the Obama administration, we've seen multiple scandals, VA scandals, uh, telling veterans they can't go to memorial parks and blocking them off and all that. Let's hear from Obama himself how much he has helped the American veteran. It's in that spirit that we have made progress these past seven years. That's how we recovered from the worst economic crisis in generations. That's how we reformed our health system and reinvented our energy sector. That's how, that's, how we, that's how we delivered more care and benefits to our troops coming home and our veterans. So there you go, the most transparent 
administration in history telling you how they help the veterans, even though, as we pointed out, VA scandals and all the rest of it, uh, the VA is trying to take away people's Second Amendment rights if they have, if they go to H&R Block and have somebody help them with their taxes. That shows you how much they are helping the American veteran. Iran releases 10 U.S. Navy sailors after boat drift drifted into Persian Gulf. Iran's Revolutionary Guard released 10 U.S. Navy sailors who were detained after two small ravine boats crossed into Iran territorial waters, the Pentagon confirmed on Wednesday. In a written statement, Secretary of State John Kerry thanked Iranian authorities for their cooperation in swiftly resolving this matter. So it's good to see that the uh, sailors were released. You know, hopefully we won't have any further hostilities on that front. Now, something that's very interesting to me, you know, I don't have any kids, but, you know, the th big thing I hear from a lot of parents is I don't want to have a gun in my house because, you know, the kids may find it or whatever else. And I understand that. You know, if you choose to buy a gun safe, that's your business. If you choose to get a biometric firearm, that is also your business. But in the state of Oklahoma, where I'm from, we have an article how parents are suing the DHS over gun policy. It says two foster parents sued the Oklahoma Department of Human Services. That's their DHS because they say certain department rules for adopting kids violate their right to own guns for self-defense. According to the lawsuit, a couple wanting to adopt are required to sign a weapons safety agreement, which states in part that they are prohibited from possessing, from possessing or carrying firearms in their vehicle or while their foster adopted children are present. So which is to say you cannot uh, drive around with a, a gun in your vehicle and also you cannot have one while your child is present. Well, the child's gonna be present in the house, right? So they're saying that you cannot have a firearm in the home. And this is just kind of, I guess you would say backdoor gun confiscation because it's to a point in this country, regardless of what Obama says and, and all these other politicians, some politicians are much more uh, overtly hardcore anti uh, second amendment rights than Obama are, is, but the issue is uh, they don't wanna go door to door and take your guns from you that way. They're too smart for that. So they come up with all these registrations. Uh, you can't have, a firearm in your home if you adopt a child or you can't have this many bullets in your magazine or you have to buy a smart gun or you have to have a safe or you can't have a gun with uh, X number of cosmetic features. So are they going door to door and kicking in your door? Yes, they did in Hurricane Katrina. Do they want to do that nationwide? I'm pretty sure not. They'd have enough police and military who rebel against that, but they're finding other ways to come after your Second Amendment rights. And it's completely ridiculous if something did happen to these kids. They would say, oh, you foster parents, you are not responsible adults for not protecting your children. Meanwhile, they're telling the foster parents that they cannot protect the children in the way that they see fit. And finally, before we go on to a special report from Leanne McAdoo, a record number of retired Americans are working part-time jobs. And this is from Zero Hedge. They said they reported on Friday that the surge in December job holders, a whopping 300,000 of these new jobs, were by multiple holders, as in one person working two or more jobs which means that when they say uh, the big charts and the graphs and X number of people are working now, yeah, there's people working two or three part-time jobs because they can't get a full-time job, uh, in part because Obamacare. It's not all Obamacare's fault, but it does have something to do with it. Now, with this in mind, we're going to talk to Leanne McAdoo. She went out to the streets with her woman on the street and asked people, if you won this massive jackpot from the lottery, what would you do with your winnings? Here's a look at that report. Usually we do about 100, 150, but recently we've been doing about like 800, 900 dollars worth. A day? Yes. Yeah. Leanne McAdoo for Infowars.com. I am out here reporting on what is being called Powerball Mania. People have gone absolutely hysterical and driven up this prize. It's the highest prize in lottery history, $1.5 billion. And as you can see, this Powerball sign doesn't even go that high. People have a one in 280 million chance that they could win this prize, but they're lining up in droves to get their winning ticket. So we're gonna go find out what would they spend th their money on? What would they do with this prize? And then I'm gonna see their reaction when I spoil all the fun and let them know that